What is up guys? Today I want to share with you some important details regarding DREAD, the Tor network, and the ITP network, which I'm starting to think is going to be the future of the dark web. But first, some background for the folks who haven't heard of DREAD. It's sort of like the dark web version of Reddit. So I guess you could call it the front page of the dark web. Uh, it has different subdreads for different topics, just like Reddit has subreddits for different topics. And it really is one of the most popular sites on the dark web. But one of the most important things that Dread has done, in my opinion, is bring order to the chaos that is darknet marketplaces, these onion sites where people can sell goods and services anonymously. And really, it's just brought a lot of order to the dark web in general because one of the issues with anonymity is that impersonation, somebody pretending to be an anonymous person is a whole lot easier to do. Exit scamming is a whole lot easier to do when people are anonymous and they can seemingly just disappear and you don't know, oh, did this person get arrested by law enforcement? You know, what happens? Uh, if your onion site goes down for some reason, it could even be a legitimate reason, maybe you're doing some repairs or upgrades to your infrastructure, but it can be really difficult to communicate that, that to people and have them know that that message is coming from you, but still broadcast that in an anonymous way. So Dread acted as a sort of official, but still anonymous social network where different vendors or operators of different sites on the dark web could communicate to their customers and let them know what is up. Now onto the explanation about why so many Onion sites and Tor as a whole has been getting DDoSed so much for several months. So this was posted by Hugbunter to Reddit, who is the head admin of Dread, and he said, I can't comment if Tor is compromised, obviously. I wouldn't know, but personally, I doubt it. This current situation is not something that suggests this in any way. The current attack we are experiencing, as well as every other service, is the result of a persistent attacker hitting us, who I have confirmed is the original attacker that spawned all of these attacks since 2019. So this has been going on for a while. And he is the only individual that has been able to develop an attack that runs directly on the Tor layer without hitting the web server, which is dangerous. He is able to directly target the inefficiencies in how Tor works and how you reach a hidden service. His Tor knowledge is excellent, allowing him to produce a streamlined attack unlike all the copycats that came after him. His goal is to extort markets, and I have had a good line of communication with him in the past when this all started, and he forced Dream Market offline as well. He decided to finally attack Dread again as a mean of disrupting information flow because it makes it harder for him to target markets when they are able to privately share mirrors through Dread. The thing that really kicked this off was Bohemia creating a bot script to send out PMs through Dread automatically in order to provide private mirrors to users. This is something that completely prevented him from having access to the majority of private mirrors they were sharing and he was specifically targeting them at the time. His attack has extended over the last few months as he has received trickles of payoffs, especially from some smaller services, allowing him to expand his fleet of servers used to carry out the attacks. With these attacks being streamlined to hit at the Tor layer, not only are they a lot cheaper than the other attacks we have saw, but while we have outscaled his attack power, we have finally hit a bottleneck that is literally impossible, literally not an exaggeration to overcome. And sure enough, if we go to Dread on Tor, this is the page that you're gonna get with Hugbunter and Paris's Canaries updated just a couple of days ago to let us know that they aren't in a basement at some government facility being interrogated. And we've got these alerts that were posted quite recently, just the other day on January 2nd. And then Hugbunter posted to Reddit actually earlier today with an update basically saying that he and Paris have been working hard upgrading Dread's infrastructure and the site should be back soon, but there's no real ETA on when they're actually gonna be back up. Uh, but they mentioned here where they're talking about how they're trying to solve the DDoS attacks that Tor is gonna be up again soon alongside the I2P gateway, which is still recommended going forward. And I know many other services are now offering an EAP site too, which is a site on I2P, which is great news as it will give some hope towards complete stability to all related communities and services. 
Now I know that this is bad timing to promote Dread on I2P because right now the I2P gateway is also down for Dread, I believe as part of the infrastructure upgrade. But what I'm seeing in these posts from Hugbunter, who runs one of the busiest and most important, most attacked sites on the dark web, is that I2P is a better option. In fact, he pretty much said this just four weeks ago in this thread where he was explaining some of the limitations that the Tor network itself is imposing in mitigating this DDoS attack and how I2P doesn't have these same uh, limitations. So he's saying here that it can't be hit, it referring to I2P, in the same way on the network side. It can at the web layer, but Endgame, which is a separate program, basically a CAPTCHA system written in Lua is able to mitigate that part of the DDoS issue. So on I2P with endgame CAPTCHA enabled, there's no problems. And he goes on to say that if everyone moved to I2P, they'd have no issues. The issue is gonna be moving people to I2P on a mass scale. You can tell users how to do so, many will follow, but the only way for a large movement is when Tor becomes completely unviable, i.e. the network being completely offline. Uh, and then he goes on to talk about how difficult it is to use I2P because, you know, I guess it is kind of difficult compared to Tor, like he says here on Tor, it's as simple as download Tor, open the Tor browser, and go to the desired onion link. But you know, I visited getitp.net, the official site of the Invisible Internet Project, which is what I2P stands for. And I saw under news and updates here that there is an easy install bundle for Windows that was released. And actually it looks like the updated version has been released too, I2P 2.0. So this makes me think that the process of using I2P, at least for Windows users, has become a whole lot easier. Because I've actually done videos about how to set up I2P on Linux in the past. Uh, I might just redo those videos because I think they're like two years old now. But if you're going on the dark web regularly, I know a lot of people are using Tor on Windows and probably not able to get to Dread or other sites. You could try installing I2P, try this easy install bundle and see if you're able to reach that service's I2P site because any hidden service that's worth a crap should have an I2P site or EAP site already. And the reason that I think I2P or something like it is going to be the future of the darknet is this reason right here. It is peer to peer with Tor, there's something like two or three million people that are using the Tor browser or at least the Tor network in some way every single day, but there's only 6,000 relays. So there's a lot of people that are leeching from Tor that are using it, but not running a relay themselves, actually contributing bandwidth to the network. That's part of the reason that it's so slow. But on I2P, you have to contribute some bandwidth. It's a private network, uh, similar to private trackers, where a minimum seed ratio is required. I2P is pretty much the Sneed's feed and seed of the dark web because of the peer-to-peer -peer feed and seed design. So more I2P content to come, maybe a video about this easy install. But seriously, if you're getting up to dark web shenanigans, don't use something like Windows, okay? It's absolutely proprietary and it's constantly sending information about your computing habits to Microsoft and God knows who else, probably three letter agencies. In the meantime, follow my tutorials on using I2P or rather I2PD, which is a better C++ implementation of I2P on Linux. It's what I currently use to go to I2P and enjoy visiting your favorite dark web eep sites.